Hello team and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video we will discuss about YAML files for Kubernetes. So as we all know that uh, for deployment of application to Kubernetes we use YAML files. YAML files are basically a set of instructions that provide detailed information about how application should be deployed and from where the docker image and everything will be coming. So I will try to explain YAML file each section of the YAML file in detail so that you can understand everything very easily also this will help you to write your own yaml files so once we complete discussion about yaml files then we will use those yaml files to deploy it in our kubernetes cluster so with that being said let's get started okay so as you can see on the screen this is the nginx yaml files and it contains two yaml files first is the deployment yaml file and second is the service yaml file Okay, so give you, giving you a short short detail about what are these two YAML files. First one is the main YAML file, which is also known as deployment.yaml file, which will be creating the main application pod. Okay, second one is the service.yaml file, which is basically a, a type of a pod which will be created, which is uh, which is used for uh, like uh, providing the network access and network configuration to our application. Okay. Now let me open both the YAML files side by side then we can discuss each section of the YAMLs okay so first of all you can see first uh, first line says API version in both the YAMLs uh, first uh, deployment.yaml has apps slash v1 and service YAML has v1 so basically API version is like a, a, a specific API in Kubernetes that is supposed to be used for creating an object so each api uh, of kubernetes contains different core objects uh, like what kind of object will be created using those api so one of the like uh, the first api first release of the api from kubernetes was v1 which is being used in this here okay so like this is the api version and that's why like uh, when we are creating uh, yaml files for kubernetes we will like check which api version we should use depending on the object that is supposed to be created okay next is kind so kind is basically refers to a type of uh, thing that will be created for example in here it is written deployment and here it is written service so when we when we like uh, apply or uh, upload this uh, yaml file in our kubernetes or run it so in that case with this first yaml where the kind says deployment it will create a pod for deployment and in second it will create a service okay because here it is written service kind is service this is the first section of yaml you can say next section is metadata so metadata as you all know basically means like a, a information of something okay so in inside metadata we can see there are two things available first is name which is basically the name of the deployment that is going to be created here also same here in the in here it says uh, name as nginx service okay and next we have labels labels is something like which is used for identification for example uh, here in, inside label we have two values basically not two values the, these the, these things are like key value pair okay app and nginx also it's not necessary that only one uh, label will be there there could be more than one label also okay so this app and the, uh, the app is nginx so this will be used for identification which i will explain in a little bit of time okay also let me show you uh, another label which could be here let me open this one yeah let me open this picture okay let me zoom it yeah so here you can see inside label section there are two key value pairs the key is environment value is production and another key is app and value is nginx so inside labels we could like have more than uh, one key value pair okay coming back to here so this is the met metadata section which provides uh, like uh, information about the type of like uh, about the type of uh, object or like something we, we, which we are creating next we have spec spec is like specification of the pod that is going to be created so here in this section you can see it is written as replicas replicas refers to the number of pods that will be created for example you can see here it is written as one that means only one pod will be created uh, of these uh, having this configuration and if you write here in pl in place of one if you write replicas number as two or three then there will be 
two or three pods will be created with the similar configuration okay then we have selector selector here also in uh, service side also selector you can see so basically selector is something that will used for grouping so let's say that we are having multiple deployment files but but uh, uh, the service the service is supposed to be same so how the service will identify that uh, uh, we, with the network access that we are supposed to provide then how would the service know that on which deployment or on which ports we are provide we are supposed to provide network access so for that reason like selector used and it, it will match these uh, values like uh, the labels so it will match it uh, to here and then here also we are having okay so both the places the selector will be uh, used for matching the values and in that way it will know that okay for these uh, these these things we uh, we have to provide the access for these things the service is supposed to be used okay and okay now next we have template template is like a blueprint template is like a blueprint for the pod to be created uh, which is also having its own metadata as well as specification in metadata again the label is written as key value pair for app and nginx key is app and value is uh, nginx okay now coming down spec again for the uh, inside template we have as i said inside template we have metadata and spec and this spec basically contains the details about the container so let's say like uh, we, we have built an application uh, let's say like we have built our own nginx web server and we have created a docker image and we have kept it on our docker repository okay now if you see here uh, it is written as containers then name of the container that will be created and then the image so this here this not uh, not just the image name but also the place from where the image is coming as, as of now like since just the name is written that means the it will be coming from a docker public repository and directly or automatically it will uh, it will be fetched from here from there the version will be 1.14.2 uh, okay so inside this specification image image basically means the uh, image that is supposed to be used for building uh, creating the pod next we have ports then we have container port so container port is like the port that will be opened on the uh, container that will be created inside the pod okay again coming back to this uh, service so here also we have ports one is a port which is 80 same as like uh, the container port and next is node port so node port is like uh, uh, a port that is opened on each node and that provides the access uh, that provides the like uh, access from outside okay f and for example like if if i'm going to deploy this uh, these two yaml files and from this like uh, nginx server is deployed then to access that server over browser we will use this port okay also point to be noted is that the node port can be in between this range 30000 to 32768 and between this the node port range will be there okay so this is the like basics uh, basic understanding of uh, we can say the yaml files and as i as i told you like uh, there could be three basic sections okay and then we have this section like first is api and kind, api version and kind then we have metadata that is used uh, that is used for providing like the labels or the uh, basic information about the object that is going to be created then we have specifications that may contain like how many parts will be created then what will be the uh, selector match label then template template is basically the uh, blueprint of the pod to be created inside template we can also have like uh, metadata of the pod uh, and specification then inside specification we can have details about the containers that is supposed to be created like which image it will have what will the port open on the container similar we have inside the service yaml ports the uh, port and the node port i hope you understand the concept of node port that it is like a port opened on node each node and from here only we will try to access our applications okay so i hope this is like the basic format like uh, to understand yaml files and i hope it was very clear to you uh, basically the point of explaining in the in this uh, basic way is that so that you can if interview comes you can like explain in basic format that uh, i know this uh, what it does and what is it used for okay now what we will do 
since I have just uh, copied both the YAMLs here also. So basically what I will do, I will create a Kubernetes local uh, cluster on my system. Okay. And I will try to deploy this uh, Nginx server. Also, once the Nginx server is deployed, we will try to tweak a little bit or customize or change things a little bit. And then we will see how our uh, deployment works. Okay. So let's move on to that. Okay, so as you can see, this is the Kubernetes cluster I have just created two, three minutes ago. So now what we will do, we will deploy that Nginx uh, application using the YAML files. So before anything, let me just create one folder here and we will keep our files here. So let me create the first YAML file. Let me edit this. Now we will copy paste the content of this one. Okay, let me just copy and paste it here. Save this and exit. Now let's create the second one. This is the surface.yaml. So we will edit this also. And here we will paste this content. Okay. Now you can see node port I have kept uh, 30,080 because similar port is already open in my uh, machine. So yeah, this one save it. Okay, so both the files are saved now. So let me just deploy them. kubectl apply hyphen f. So one deployment is created. Now service we will create. Kubectl apply half an F. Okay, service also created. Let me clear the screen now. Kubectl get parts. Okay, so pod is already running. Let's check for services okay services is also running so meanwhile let's try to access the application one time copy this here okay it is running now what i will do i will edit the yaml file a little bit okay so let me edit So what I want to do as you saw that there is one pod created so let's say I want to create two pod so we will save this and run the command to apply again let's see okay so deployment is already created let's see the status here kubectl hyphen f sorry kubectl apply hyphen f Sorry, 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 sorry. Kubectl get pods. Yeah. So now you can see there are two of the pods available for Nginx. Now you know the main reason for like using replicas is that if one pod is going down, then at least other will be working fine. So for this reason, usually uh, like companies prefer to have multiple pod, multiple replicas of an application. So in this way, like you can edit and again apply, and changes will be deployed. So. I think that you saw it how easy it becomes like a yaml file is already there you can just edit and make changes in yaml file quickly apply the changes here and then we can uh, get the deployment done as easy as possible also for now as you saw like i was doing everything from uh, like uh, by running the command manually only 
but everything all all of these things can be automated while when we are using uh, azure devops or jenkins or any other ci cd tool so if you want we can completely automate and that i will be showing you in upcoming videos so for now like this is pretty much like in this way this was the basic example of uh, understanding of the yaml files for kubernetes so i hope this video was quite useful for you if it was then i hope you can give it a like and if you are new on my channel then make sure to subscribe so thanks for watching